Good morning, guys. We're going to wait just a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful morning or evening or afternoon, depending upon where you are at. And uh, we appreciate you guys jumping on for this webinar. Looks like we're getting to to right up on the the start time here. Shall we go ahead and kick this off, Wayne? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Like Craig said, I hope everybody's having a good day. My name is Wayne Patton. I'm a sales engineer with SUSE. I'm Craig Little, and I'm one of the sales engineers at SUSE as well. And we're here to deliver this sort of virtual meetup. We've got a little bit of presentation, mostly demo today. And so if you've got any questions as you go along, use the question tab there in uh, GoToWebinar, uh, and we will take most of them towards the end. Uh, if we're able to fit some of them in in the middle, we'll see what we can do there, but we're gonna work on most of those towards the end. And let's, let's kind of launch into this. SUSE's got a vision around open source software to simplify, modernize, and accelerate. This is to help you guys do those three items. Uh, and what we're gonna talk about today in this webinar is another aspect of how do I simplify my environment? How do I accelerate it? So I'm spending less admin time to go do the same things that, were ne that are necessary for what's going on. As part of that, there was an announcement that we're going to dig into the details of. Yeah, so back in August, we made an announcement, and the announcement was that starting in August, we were going to include live patching and the SUSE Lifecycle Manager in the marketplace SLES for SAP images in the three major cloud providers. That's Amazon, Google Compute, Microsoft Azure, and those are starting with the images that were created in August. If you happen to find an image to... Um, that doesn't have it automatically enabled when the system gets built, they can be added. So don't worry about that. But they are they are going to be included. And what we're going to talk about today is some live patching and SUSE manager capabilities surrounding this announcement. So live patching, if you're not familiar with what it is, is it's the ability to live patch the Linux kernel for stability and security updates. By live patch, that means I don't have to take any of the applications that are running on that box. I don't require a reboot. I'm not putting a new kernel into place. I'm actually just updating the code in the existing kernel. Now, there is some pieces that you need to do to enable this capability, but once it's enabled, it's a very, very cool capability. And this is part of what we're delivering with this announcement. You now, with your marketplace images, get this particular entitlement. 
So right now we support kernel live patching and kernel live patching supplies, excuse me, provides fixes for kernel bugs and also improves your security, your stability, your data integrity. Um, what, what's coming in the near future though is also gonna be user land live patching. And user land live patching is gonna give your application providers the capability of patching your applications. So in the future, you're gonna be able to live patch not only your system and your kernel, but also applications. And this is gonna help reduce downtime, both planned and unplanned, and maybe even reduce some of your patching downtime in your maintenance window. So you can go ahead and take care of security vulnerabilities and things that need to get patched without taking your business offline. So with SUSE Manager, we can utilize that live patch capability, but we can also fold in the rest of the patches that you might need to deploy, configuration management, uh, audit sort of controls that you can put in place for your overall system. SUSE Manager is the manager component that you guys are now getting with those marketplace images, the client side of the subscription, but it is a best in breed Linux management tool set which supports SUSE platforms, Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu. It really supports all of those major distros that you might be running in your environment, both on-prem, public cloud, private cloud, wherever these workloads are running. As long as there's networking capability, you're good to go. So we're gonna talk about some of those capabilities that you're getting as part of that in entitlement. One of the interesting new features of SUSE Manager is the content content lifecycle management feature. What this does, it allows you to define sub environments in your environment. And here on a slide, we have an example of dev, QA, and prod. And the content lifecycle management project would create repos, patch repos for these different environments. And then you would use rules to populate those repos and then you graduate them up from left to right across the screen. They would get applied to the first environment you would promote them into the next environment, and then you would promote them into yet the next environment. And this saves you from having to reassign patch repos on systems. You leave the system subscribed to repos, and you promote patches through the environment. So it simplifies in a, a multi-tiered environment where you have patches starting in an environment and ending in production. And we'll show you a little bit more detail about that later on in the demo. So the whole thing that's wrapped around these new entitlements, these marketplace images is SAP. SUSE has been the best platform for running SAP for a long time and it primarily comes out of our 20 years of joint collaboration and innovation that we've done with SAP. It, and as you can see from some of those statistics, there's an awful lot of HANA in the world running on SAP or running on uh, SUSE, excuse me. There's a whole lot of NetWeaver. The whole there's all of the business one uh, on HANA runs on SUSE. So there's a lot of that out there. We've been working with SAP for a long time on being able to develop these great pieces that allow an SAP environment to run even better. Live patching and SUSE Manager really folds into that that joint innovation and what helps uh, an SAP system run well. So that, that's the reason that all of this kind of is coming together and including the, the presentation today. So now we're going to go ahead and show you some demos. And we're going to talk about live patching, SUSE Manager, and some other interesting features. So Craig, take it away with the Perfect. first part of the demo. Let me get... Uh, let me increase the size of this here. Uh, that's a little better. Hopefully you guys can all see that. One of the first things that I want to show you is I'm logged into an EC2 uh, instance in AWS. And if you guys are not familiar with it, Pint is a great tool for understanding what resources might be available. In this particular case, the resources that I just asked for was the, the Amazon update servers. And so these are all of the SUSE update servers that are available to you, what their IPs are, where they exist in the environment. But Pint can also do a variety of other things. One of the other things I often use it for is to go validate images. So you see down there near the bottom of that list where I can go look at
and just go give me the the list of images and this is something that you might do from a from a shell scripting point of view so these are all of the images that are out there and available whether they're depreciated live whatnot so on that side of it it's a cool tool to have you can use it and fold it into scripting and things of that nature but let's talk about live patching a little bit so one of the first things you, that you want to kind of understand is my system valid or has been updated to use live patching and using a live patch kernel and one of the ways you can tell is if you see at the end of let's see I'll use a cursor here right here you can see this lp in the kernel description that means this system is using a live patch kernel it's one of those things that as the starting point quick and easy i know that it's live patch klp is the the live patch command line utility so klp status lets you know whether the system is ready to accept live patches because SUSE manager or SUSE uses a, a lazy write kind of method in that it's not going to shut any processes down. It's not going to halt processes. The system continues to run. It may let you know that there's a process that's still waiting to accept the last live patch. So status is a quick and easy way of letting you know what's going on. And then KLP patches lets you know which live patches are in place and that we know that the live patch 522 is in place. But if we do a dash V, we can see which CVEs that these live patches are covering. So it gives you a little more information on what's going on. So that's from a command line point of view, as really as simple as it gets with, with live patch. And now you use zipper, and I'm gonna show you the zipper lifecycle. We'll let this go ahead and run, and then we'll roll back up to the top. But zipper lifecycle is a capability that you may or may not be aware of, where it gives you what packages have updates available. And so this allows you to kind of see what's going on uh, in your environment. And if we roll all the way up to the top, it gives us where your end dates are for some of the modules and components that are installed. So I would take, I would recommend you take a look at Zipper Lifecycle and kind of take a look through there. Hey, but Craig. To, yes, sir. We have a question that came in that's actually about this pertinent topic right now. So are KLP and Pint SUSE commands or AWS features? So Pint is SUSE and it is across multiple cloud providers you can actually even run it on-prem and go go ping that information and klp is also a SUSE command that's part of the uh, live pat live kernel patch package appreciate that wayne thank you uh, so the zipper search kernel dash live will get us all of the live kernel patches that are available for the system we're doing a quick refresh right here of all the modules that the system's been subscribed to. And apparently there was some updates to the base system there. We'll let it go ahead and finish. And this is going to give us a list of the live kernel patches that we can deploy. It'll also show us that some of them have already been deployed. We'll let it finish cooking here, and there we go. So this is, we're on the, the underscore four or five kernel on this system that we're working on right now. But we see that that's the one that's deployed. We could update it to one of these other live kernels, and we would do that as simple as zipper, install, whichever of these live patch kernels that we need to do. Moving to a new kernel will require a reboot. So this is one of those things that you're going to want to uh, build into your overall patch process. But these are some of the, the pieces that we can deploy. And then uh, if we take a look and just go ahead and do a zipper up. I don't know how many of you guys just do zipper up and let it roll for all of the updates to your environment. Notice there's a whole bunch of modules that it wants to update on this box. There's a lot of, lot of pieces. But one of the things that it wants to put in right down here is a new kernel. If you just let this run by itself and did zipper up and tell it to go, you will take your system and it'll require a reboot. As you see, there's a variety of things that are saying that it's going to require a reboot. 
and it will also move you to a non-live patch kernel. So we're gonna go ahead and answer no there, but there is a way of doing this without being able to use zipper up without necessarily killing that live patch kernel. And that's by locking the kernel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do list lock where I went in and locked the, the live patch kernel. So now it cannot be over, overwritten by zipper. So that's one methodology. But it's far easier if you look at it using the lifecycle content management in SUSE Manager. So we're gonna we're gonna switch here and move over to our SUSE Manager piece, where we'll start talking about how do you bring those systems in and manage the the patch content. Wayne. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. So this screen is in SUSE Manager, and one one point I'd like to uh, make clear at the beginning is that while Craig was working on a system in AWS. The instance of SUSE Manager that we're talking about today is located in a private cloud that's not part of AWS. So we've got SUSE Manager and then the resulting managed system in different cloud providers, so to speak, in different locations. So they don't have to be located together. So this is one way to bootstrap or bring a system into SUSE Manager as a form where we'd fill out a host name and whatnot. And kind of the important thing I'd like to point out here is that this thing called an activation key, and we're going to dwell on this for a couple of minutes. And the activation key, go back a screen, Craig, please. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. And the activation key right there where he's pointing, if Craig drops up that list, you can see that this particular system has a lot of different activation keys. And those keys are basically a, a tag that tells SUSE Manager what repos, what configuration, in other words, a lot of details that we want applied to the specific system that we're going to bring into and manage with SUSE Manager. Okay, next tab there, Craig. Thank you. So there's some details here about the activation key. And the activation key is some name that I get if give it. But if you scroll if Craig's scrolling down here, the main point I wanted to show here is that these are the repositories that this activated system is going to get subscribed to for its patches. And you'll see in the middle of the name there, it might be an eye chart, but you see the word dev, D-E-V, and Craig's pointing to it. And that'll make sense here in just a minute. But these are specific repositories that are part of a SUSE manager content lifecycle management project. And we'll... That's a lot of words there, Wayne. It is. <laughs> it is. So let's go to the um, next screen. So the configuration channel. Yeah, the configuration channel. So in addition to applying specific repos, we can also apply system configuration details to the system as it gets activated. And here I've made a definition of three different configuration actions that I wanted to sample. The first one is I'm gonna lay a generic configuration file in place. And yeah, you'll see that the file name is not a specific uh, configuration file. It's a sample that I've created for, for this, but you can lay any configuration file that you want in place on a system. I have the second one in the middle there is I want to install IOTAP or I can install any number of packages or patterns or things that I can install with Zipper. Any packages I, I want installed on a system I can have added automatically with SUSE Manager takes on managing a client. And I can also remove packages. And one of the things that we need to remove in an AWS system, for example, is these cloud region serve packages. So when SUSE Manager takes over management of a system, these packages need to come off the system. So as SUSE Manager enrolls the system, SUSE Manager can automatically remove the packages as well. So I don't have to do that manually. Because we, we could have done that using Zipper as well but this is brings a whole lot of automation to the mix. It does. So let's go to the next tab there, Craig. So the content lifecycle project that I mentioned, what that is is a way of managing repositories for an environment. And a, a project starts with the base SUSE repositories. So what Craig has on the screen right now is our standard SLES for SAP repositories. As we scroll down a little bit more, we'll see that there are some rules that we've applied to these repositories. And the rules, for example, are 
We're going to deny any patches that were issued after September 1st of 2020. That's the green one there. I've changed rules recently, so I got rid of the August 1st and I made it September 1st. We're going to deny all reboot required patches. So when Craig was having to do zipper locks before, we can just filter out reboot patches in, in, the, in the repositories. And we can allow live patches, right? So that's going to make this content lifecycle project a live patching project. So it's going to go ahead and apply live patches to our system. And then there's a couple other rules I won't delve into, but you can add as many rules as you need. And then once we've got our rules defined and some environments to define, we can click build, which we've already done a few times. In the first place the patches end up is in the dev environment. And you see I built that, oh, it looks like 12, 10, not too long ago. And then once I apply those to certain systems, then I can promote those patches to the test environment. And then after those systems receive the patches and I'm confident that everything's running correctly, I can promote those patches into the next environment, which in this case I've labeled production or prod. You can define, I have three environments defined, but you can define as many environments as you need. It could be two, it could be five, it could be three like I have. And you can name these environments anything you want. So this is totally customizable for your environment. It just helps you manage your patching in such a way that makes things easier and helps promote patches throughout the environment. So once we've sorry, bootstrap <laughs> the system into SUSE Manager, yeah, you're on the right screen, Craig. I'm sorry. I misspoke yeah. here. Once we brought a system into SUSE Manager, the end result is here we've got an EC2 AWS system. And Craig, scroll down, please. And we go to the bottom here, and we'll see that the repositories are those dev repositories from my content lifecycle management. The configuration items that I spoke about have gotten applied automatically. So all this thing, ha all this happened in an automated fashion by enrolling it in SUSE Manager and using that activation key that had the content lifecycle management and the configuration channels all pre-enrolled and ready to go for the system. Kind of cool. Kind of a cool approach to to managing via that activation key to where you can have separate activation keys for all the various types of servers that you have and you can do all of your configuration inbound through the SUSE manager piece that is spectacular thank you wayne yeah so now i'm going to pass it back to you craig so you can tell us about what sap tune is sap tune one of my favorite utilities this is one that not a lot of folks are aware of. Uh, I had I've had a couple of customers where I go, hey, have you seen Saptune? And they go, no. And they go, this is wonderful, especially for those folks that are not SAP basis, that are administering SAP systems, and they're going, oh, what? How do I know what I need to do? Saptune is a tool that allows you to take it takes the SAP notes and turns them into uh, configurations for you. So if we do SAP tune, and for those of you that don't know what a SAP note is, SAP notes, as long as I can type and talk at the same time, SAP notes are documentation from SAP that say what they want to see on a system to run HANA, to run NetWeaver, to run BobJ, to run these various pieces from the SAP world. So these SAP notes, these are some of the ones that are listed that are part of Saptune, and you can see the SAP note number on the left-hand side and the little description there. So you can go look at what notes are uh, in place, but the easier way um, that I like to do is look at it from a solution point of view. So I have these various solutions. HANA looks like there's a handful of SAP notes that apply. So I can do, Got to capitalize that. And there's a simulate option that allows you to, and it puts out a lot of content, so I'm going to use the less command here, uh, that allows you to go see what changes might it recommend. Let me see what I typed wrong here. reverse your on and your simulate 
Thank you. There we go. That was what I was expecting. Again, typing and talking at the same time is not, not my strong suit. But notice here, it's going through the value that's currently set and the value that's expected. And this tells you what it would do in a specific type of environment. And notice it gives you hints. It makes sure you take a look at these very specific things. But for somebody that's not a basis person, this is a quick and easy fashion to get a system updated to be able to run SAP properly. So it's one of those kind of uh, fun environments that you want to want to take a look at. So we've talked about how to manage the systems a little bit, but we haven't really talked about how to build a system. And there's a couple of cool things because of the public cloud that we can go take a look at. And so we're gonna switch over here to the Azure Public Cloud. And I've just opened up the client interface, command line interface for Bash, because you've got a choice of Bash or PowerShell, but we're talking Linux, so we're gonna play in Bash today. And we're gonna take a look at the a shell script that I created to help make my life easier. And hopefully that's a little easier to read there. On this bash script, it's a very simple bash script, but ends up being very powerful in that I'm just entering a base name and environment number. I echo it to the screen to kind of validate that it is what I want it to be. And then it goes out and uses the Azure VM create command, along with a whole slew of uh, arguments for it to blow out workloads. In this case, I'm blowing out a HANA cluster along with the central instance or ASCS. This quickly and easily blows out machines based on, a ver on an image and just starts creating them. And so if we run it, like I said, it's, in, it's really simple. Test four, environment number 103. And it's going to create these workloads with this name inside of Azure. And it's just really, really simple. I'm going to go ahead and uh, exit that one right now because I don't necessarily want to kick those off and go have to go clean those up later. But you can blow out workloads really quickly and easily using uh, these components. But that's just one methodology to get a little bit more power. We can actually talk about Terraform. So Terraform is a utility that we have built a lot of, or invested a fair amount of development time and effort into to provide these SUSE templates for use in Terraform. What the beauty of Terraform is, I can run it through one command uh, sort of structure and blow out entire environments, including full cluster configs. It does not only the image deployment, but it does some of the add-on uh, configuration components as well. So it does some very spectacular things. Notice up here, we've got a GitHub uh, project where you can go get this information and it's got a lot of details. Also, if you take a look at the SUSE best practices documentation, there is a step-by-step -step that works really well on walking you through these pieces, but I've got it set up here in my Azure workspace. And if we take a look, there's a whole slew of files here, but they're really not as difficult as you might think. So the infrastructure TF, main TF, outputs TF, modules, um, the variables TF, all of that comes down as part of that GitHub project. The Terraform TF vars is the one that you go into to set your basic pieces. And let's just take a look at the top end of this. And it does things like, I'm going to, need to go set my Azure region. I'm going to go set my resource group name. I'm going to set my VNet, my subnet, my storage account. You do all of that through one file. And, th and then you do a Terraform init, 
which goes through and make sure all of the base components, the files are there, some of those base pieces are there, and it's installing some HashiCorp pieces. It goes through and preps your environment. Um, so we're gonna go list the workspaces. I already have one created because I'd needed to test and make sure, but I've got one created and selected because otherwise you would need to select it. And then you do a Terraform plan. Terraform plan is what's pulling together all of the, the various pieces. And it's gonna throw me a, a little bit of a note because I didn't output it to, a, to an actual file. But I'm going to scroll up here a little bit, and you can see everything that it's going to do. I'm going to create storage. I'm going to use a particular image. I'm going to create data disk. Here's the keys that I'm going to use. So it's got all of these pieces ready to go for you. The plan just validated everything was, was good to go. And then Terraform apply is the last part, and that's what's going to actually go build the full environment. And so it's doing a, a quick validation of the files, yes to approve, uh, and again, I don't wanna have to go clean up all of these pieces, so we'll, we'll leave it at this, but we can go build a full multi-node cluster with iSCSI providers for the, the uh, Stoneth block devices for the cluster, all of those pieces come together very quickly and easily. So we've talked command line, simple image, and then we've also talked about uh, Terraform, a little more complex, a lot more power, but we haven't really talked about the basics of the straight marketplace images that are available. And hopefully you guys are a little bit aware of that. But one of the things I wanted to point out is on Amazon, we've got the SUSE Manager server, marketplace image that's our AMI, that's waiting to, for you guys to utilize. Now, keep in mind, the SUSE Manager is not included as part of the entitlements we're giving away with these. The SUSE Manager server is not included with the entitlements. It's just the client side piece that's being given away with the marketplace images. You still would need a SUSE Manager subscription uh, but you've got you've got the bulk of the the pieces. You got all the client side components, but you would need the the server piece. But this is an image that allows you to spin it up quickly and easily. And if I pop back here to Azure, and we're going to go search for SUSE Manager, and in the marketplace, there is marketplace images for SUSE Manager as well. So you can go blow one or deploy one of these and away you go. Uh, and I just saw in one of the questions, the SUSE manager subscription would be purchased from SUSE. And so you can talk to your SUSE, uh, SUSE account executive or hit the inside line. You can also go get 60 day evals. So one of the things to potentially uh, go take a look at at uh, www.susa.com. There's a free downloads tab in the upper right corner. So, in fact, in fact, Craig, there is that evaluation keys out there for anything that you want to try that SUSE provides. Exactly. So let's. I think. Let me let me check my notes here. I think we are ready to move back to to the presentation. And let's talk about the the rest of the the SUSE products space that that Wayne mentioned. We can go get demos or evaluation keys for. Uh, we talked about some of the core OS pieces, some of the public cloud components, absolutely, SUSE Manager, but we've got a full container uh, management platform that we would love to talk to you guys about if you're interested. And we've got some other good news. Yeah, so on the container platform story, SUSE acquired Rancher recently, and it became official the first part of December. And Rancher provides a best-in-class Kubernetes solution. And for more information about that, there's a Bitly link on your screen um, where you can go read about the announcement and some details. We're 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 really excited about how this comes together because it really is a stronger together type of story. 
Uh, they've got some very cool stuff. We've got some cool stuff, not a lot of overlap. I'm really excited to, to kind of see where this is uh, going. So from an overall perspective, you know, we talked about some, some uh, uptime with live kernel patching, and frankly, it could be just easier admin time. It could make your admin life much, much easier. The ease of managing the, the patches and the patch content with SUSE Manager, the fact that this is available in all of the, the major public cloud providers, world-class support from SUSE, and on top of that, you get increased security because you can easily update those servers that are running applications that the business never wants you to touch. So that's one of those um, components. Saw another question come in. SUSE Manager is available on-prem as well. So that's one where you can run it. You can run it on-prem to manage on-prem resources as well as your public cloud resources. And that's one of the things our, our demo environment that we were showing actually is managing systems across four or five different or what are the three major cloud providers, my desk, I've got, a, <laughs> I've got a device on my desk that it's managing, as well as a variety of other private cloud uh, capabilities. So take a look at open source. You know, hopefully you guys are already doing some of that, but we've got some very cool solutions that we'd love to, to talk to you guys about. So included in the deck that we're gonna send out later, there's some useful links for you. That, um, about some of the things that we've talked about today. So if you missed where the pages that Craig or I showed you, then here's the here's the links that you're going to be able to go find this information. Get to the last slide. Again, thank you guys so very much for your time today. I know we hit somewhat of a high level of uh, some of these topics. There are absolutely these are topics that we could dig into for for quite a while if we wanted to. But our goal today was to get you introduced to them and let you see some of the value of them and some of the ease of use and the good capabilities that come with them. And we would love to, to talk more in depth with you guys about these. Just uh, you can uh, drop a, a question and uh, say, hey, contact me and get some contact info and we would love to do that. Wayne or I, you know, if it wasn't COVID and pandemic, we'd fly out and come see you, right, Wayne? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> if you've got questions, you can reach out to me at wayne.patton at suzu.com and Craig. Dot little, L-I-D-D-L-E at suzu.com. We would love to to see those and we'll we'll make sure and include those in the, the materials that get sent out later. So while we're on the thank you page, I'm going to go ahead and let's see if we can scroll through some of these questions and we'll kind of work through so here's them. Here's one, Craig, you might want to, we might want to answer. Um, okay. SAP notes is for the OS and not the database or applications? The the SAP notes that we were referencing with SAPTune is specifically related to the operating system. There are SAP notes that relate to the configuration and installation of the, the SAP environment as well. So you would use, but they're different SAP notes. So you would use those SAP notes for, for the SAP pieces as well. So question just in, can we contact you guys through LinkedIn? I don't I don't care. That's fine. That, that is just fine as well. <laughs> that might be easier sometimes than email. But yeah, I would uh, welcome uh, questions and contacts via LinkedIn. You as well, Wayne? Yeah, that's I'm, I'm on there. It should be easy to find just like most of Perfect. us like these days. And there will be uh -huh. the, the follow-up on the, the deck. That will be yeah, it's the deck later. available for download. Now, the deck will be provided in a follow-up email to all the attendees. So you should get an email and either the deck will be included or there'll be a link on how to download it, one or the other. I'm not sure which it is, but you'll have access to the deck afterwards. Perfect. Hey, Craig, it's Jeff. I've got a few other questions that I had answered in the background here. Uh, one of the questions was just asking and confirming that live patching can be done uh, with S4 HANA up and running. And um, I've affirmed that in writing at this point. Um, other one in here was asking where to find Pint. I had provided a link in the uh, written Perfect. response for the question for the attendees. Um, there is a Python package that needs to be installed for the public cloud info utility. Correct. Uh, and that actually is a little it's a little tough to find because of that, but it's the public cloud information utility. 
that uh, that I think you can do a zipper search on and you can go find that package. And it is part of the public cloud module. So you will need the public cloud module as part of that. Thank you, Jeff. Another, another question just came in. What are the frequency of the SAP Tune release to ensure that we have the latest SAP notes? This is one, I don't know if there's a specific frequency, but this is something that is updated as part of our partnership with SAP and the SLES for SAP components. And so that is something that comes out of the Linux labs. They're located at Waldorf for the Linux support in SAP. Okay, thanks. Yeah. The next question, will live patching work even if it's an SAP HA cluster? Well, yes, and, that's one of the yes. use cases that we'd like to promote live patching for. Because, you know, you can do a rolling patch cycle with a cluster, but that ends up burning up a lot of admin time to accomplish that. Because you got to, you know, swap the resources over, patch one, validate, swap resources back. Whereas live patch, you could deploy them and be done and walk away and get home for in time for dinner or not have to be in at a Saturday night on a midnight. Uh, is SUSE Manager included with the entitlements for the marketplace images? A SUSE Manager server is not included with the marketplace images, but it's easy enough to, to come by. So would would love to recommend that piece, but you will need the SUSE Manager server component separately. Yeah, the lifecycle management components are included, which is component. Perfect. I think that's the end of the question so far. Are there any Perfect. others? Hey, hey, Craig, in the yes. organizer chat, I threw a link to our documentation in there. Can you pull that up for one second? I will. While you're doing that, there's a next question that I don't know the answer to. So Jeff, you're gonna to have to help me out. Is SAP Automation integrates the Prometheus and Grafana, which are available with SUSE Manager? Yeah, so there are Prometheus and Grafana uh, patterns put together both in SLUS for SAP as well as SUSE Manager with the monitoring entitlement. Um, both have been packaged for easy deployment and have some default configuration so that they're usable in relatively short order. Um, there is documentation on how to go about deploying that and absolutely I would recommend you taking a closer look at it. Um, the last little one more bit for everybody that's on the phone that I wanted to point out here is if you look at, a, at our documentation website for automation, this is actually new with SLES for SAP 15 SP2. And you'll find references to the Terraform templates in here, but you'll also find references to some default published SALT formulas that have been added that can be used with SUSE Manager and with SALT Stack local instances using the open source project. You scroll down to section four, Craig, what you'll see here is a list of um, NetWeaver components that can be deployed with SALT formulas. These SAP NetWeaver bootstrap formulas and SAP HANA bootstrap formulas will allow you to actually deploy and configure the um, elements of the SAP binary workloads and allow for configuration of the application and configuration scenarios for setting up a NQ replication server, as well as deploying fully configured clusters. This is just a nice little extra item for everybody on the, uh, the phone joining us today. I recommend everybody to take a look. We are happy to work with our customers and partners on these formulas. Our services team is well able to engage on this topic as well. Um, we may actually consider a future session digging a little bit deeper on, on this topic as well. So. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, stepping into that SAP deployment and automation topic, we really just cut the, the top level of, of that topic. There is so much that we can dig into on that piece um, from inside of public cloud and on-prem, both. But yeah. this, is, this is a great chunk of documentation. Uh, yeah, the, the other section, the section three hits on the uh, SAP HANA Prometheus exporter salt formula as well for the person that had asked the question there. So yeah, uh, and the Prometheus pieces for the the SAP environment, there's actually a lot of great data that's being exported specific to HANA and the cluster. 
So there's some very, very cool things there. And actually, Jeff, that's another topic that I think we might want to tackle down the road is sort of that care and feeding and monitoring of, of your SAP environment. So there's some very cool things that we could talk about there. And then while we've got the documentation page up, uh, the, the other piece of it is the best practices. And I'm going to navigate to it here real quick. So the SUSE so best practices. Go ahead, Wayne. Oh, I was going to say, while you're navigating, we have another question. Have you tested this automation for SAP HANA and SUSE running on IBM Power Servers, or are these mostly tested on x86 platforms? So they are tested on both now. Now that Power is also supported in the live patching, live kernel patching uh, capability, and we just also released this on Z for those of you that are running on the Z platform. We didn't talk about that much today due to those not really running in public cloud. It's tough to find a power server in a public cloud type of environment, but it is supported in, in that space. Uh, we'd love to chat more with you on those pieces. I've got a couple of customers that are doing live patch on power. And on the topic of SAP automation, is this free to use? or the the automation pieces the command line absolutely that i talked about the terraform is free to use and the pieces that jeff was just talking through on the documentation yeah, i think he's uh, talking about the pieces jeff was talking about and those are those would be available to you guys as well now the use of the salt pieces you may have to go grab either the community edition of salt or um or the the salt state or the salt that might be included with SUSE manager as well. Next and then question. the SUSE, the SUSE live patch, I I believe it is certified. <laughs> I'm sorry, Wayne, taking that's taking okay. words out of your mouth. Uh, I believe it is certified, but that's one that I would need to validate inside of a inside of one of those SAP notes. You found so, the best practices. I did find best practices. <laughs> And one of the things that I wanted to walk through here was the getting started uh, with the high availability is a is a great document. And then there's another one in here on the, the Terraform. But even if outside of those topics, there's a slew of great uh, best practice articles and documentation in here uh, to be able to utilize that. So there is some good options. And and thank you for the the correction on power in the public cloud, uh, but we got to go to IBM for that, not not the Azure, Amazon, Google groups. I do appreciate the the clarification there. Well, guys, we do wish you guys a, a wonderful holiday season. And yes, we we will include the best practice link. Uh, yeah, that is part of the. It'll be in the deck that you get emailed yep. that specific link. Thank you, everybody. Uh, had fun presenting to you guys, and I hope everybody is safe and has a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye now.